Uh, we're not very athletic. Um, and with Randall, we're just going to have to get some lucky turnovers, some good bounces to go our way. We're not going to turn the ball over, and we're going to need to sustain long 15, 18 play drives if we're going to get it done. All right, and I also consider, uh, I'm not going to ask you about this, but I know that with high school rules being different from NFL rules, if you wanted to work in a surprise onside, if you thought it might work, <laughs> then that is, that is you know, on the table, whereas it's not in the in the NFL. Oh, yeah, we... we if they've watched film. We, we kick every which way we can on kickoffs. We take every advantage we can. If they got three cats back there. We sure as hell don't want to kick too. So our, our kicks will be short. That's for sure. And you also may be aware that uh, let's say your defense gets a stop at around its own 40 yard line, and and you assume that maybe Randall is going to punt. They probably won't punt. They have a killer kicker, Christian Mungia. He can make it from 55 plus. Yeah, we've seen him on film. Uh, I know he made like a 52-yarder against Texas City. Uh, very talented kid. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we're just going to do the best we can, Raj. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. And I also look forward to future seasons when you don't have the, the very unfortunate injuries at the beginning of a year and you're going to come in here and you're going to be the juggernaut. Yeah, I mean, we had two district championships, uh, freshman classes back-to-back. So our young kids are pretty good. Uh, it's just this year we're, we had some unfortunate injuries with our seniors, but uh, hopefully we build it back up and get going. All right. That is Brett Sniffen, head coach of Belton. Thanks very much. Thanks, thanks, Roger. Good luck tonight, and we'll be back, and we'll get our pregame visit on the Countdown to Kickoff show with the head coach of the Randall Lions, Brian Randall, who has, well, he's gotten the keys to a wonderful program, and they are off to an undefeated season, and we'll talk to him about what he's got going for him going into this game against Belton. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. I'm Roger Smith, Rosie Bega, the silent partner inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters. It's a cool and getting cooler evening with a moon that's not quite full, but it sure looks like it might as well be full here at Trailer Stadium. Glad to have you with us as we break the seal on the playoffs for 2024. We're your only broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School sports. VipeFortBend.com. Introducing Love Houston, professional volleyball like you've never seen it before. You saw them win silver in Paris this summer. Now you can see them playing for the first time on American soil. Love Houston will feature some of the best pro players in the world, including two-time Olympic medalists Jordan Thompson and Micah Hancock. Get ready for first serve in January 2025. Visit lovb.com for tickets. Volleyball is the next major league. Welcome back to the Countdown to Kickoff show as we get you ready for Belton visiting the Randall Lions. And here to introduce himself and the rest of our officiating crew is our back judge. Thanks. My name is David Leach. I'm the back judge. At referee, we have Ronnie Morgan. At head linesman, we have Mike Jenkins. At uh, line judge, we have Chip Hinkle. At umpire, we have Steve Alexander. At field judge, we have Ronnie Morgan Jr. And at side judge, judge, we have Willie Demby. All right, thank you, Mr. Leach, and maybe we'll see you again along the playoff road. We follow Fort Bend County teams wherever they go. Sounds good. I'll see you down the road. All right, and remember, the UIL always needs more officials in every sport, so if you think you can do better than these guys, well, sign up at TASO.org. We could use them for everything from water polo to tennis to football to basketball, all that stuff. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAndAuto.com. All right, we're back. The countdown to kickoff show continues, and our first playoff broadcast of 2024 football is the Randall Lions hosting Belton. And Brian Randall, head coach of the Lions, joins me. And first of all, Coach, 
Everybody knows what a great offense that you have in your great running attack with Landon Williams Callis, but I don't think enough is said about the defense. You have a state class defense, in my opinion. What is best about it and what do you do best? They, they play together as a unit. Our coaches work their tails off. Like game plans are always on point. And that's the, the biggest thing is our coaches put a great grand plan together and the kids execute it. But our kids on defense, they're just a bunch of hardworking kids. It's led by Chase Sims and I can't say enough about that whole group. So in your week of preparation for this game, did you do anything different? Did you maybe um, scale things back a little bit to keep more tread on the tire? Or did you really push your guys? How did it go? We push them. Like I've, I've talked to different people and I have, a, I have a really, really good veteran staff now. And I talked to some of those guys, but even then I, I, don't, I don't believe in tapering back. I don't believe in it and I gotta go with, with what got us here. And hard work got us here. So we're going to continue to work hard. And when I say we did some stuff this week that was kind of out of the ordinary, like we, we, we'll do boot camp stuff in the middle of the week. Like we're, we're a little different. But that's why we dominate like we do. All right. So we look ahead to the next round. Well, I'm not even going to ask you that. I know you wouldn't even answer it because you've got to take care of what's in, in front of you tonight rather than even think about what is ahead. But let me ask you about your, your kicker, Christian Mungia. I've asked him, asked you about him before, but he's just so impressive and it seems like he has an incredible range. Did you know what a great kicker you had when he came on to your team for the first time? Oh, absolutely. Like Mungia is one of those kids. It's just self-motivated like it's intrinsic everything comes from inside and when I tell you he just it's funny because he gets in our way sometimes at practice like we'll be doing inside or run hole or seven on seven and Christian will be over there I'm like Christian god dog it I need you to go to that one you know but it's it's just kind of it's tough because we got to share the field but when I tell you he's gonna find somewhere to kick like that kid's gonna find somewhere he'll find a patch of grass and get busy and that's why he's that's why he's good as he is I guess it's kind of like in golf, you know, when somebody who hits really long is behind you and then they hit it 50 yards past you, uh, yeah. could be dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, it's fun, man. He's got, he's a great kid. He's got great parents. I like guess it's, it's a fun group of people to be around. We've got a great community and we're just, we're just excited. All right. Finally, I know this is going to be the first time that some people are tuning in because it's playoff time and everything and talk about the family legacy dr thomas randall the former superintendent of lcisd and you and your brother in the coaching family in lcisd absolutely well i dad i'm not just saying this is my dad but he's a great dude like like my father is really like a legit man he's a better man than i'll ever be um i've got no problem saying that because he's just he's got such integrity and we try our best to instill a lot of his beliefs in these kids and how to just grind and how to work hard. Doesn't matter the obstacle because we're always getting something thrown at us. And that's the funny thing about life and then being out here is that we're always getting something thrown at us, always getting something thrown at us. But our kids, we just put our head down and grind and work it out. So, All right. And I love that, you know, he's around to see what might be a really special year. But regardless of what happens this year, I think you have a great future for this Randall Lions program. Amen. I agree. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well done. Thank you very much. And we'll be back to kick it off. It is the Randall Lions. They are state ranked. They are undefeated. They're taking on Belton. And maybe Belton is not quite the team that they thought they would have when the season started. Nevertheless, I know they're going to be a worthy opponent. And I will tell you, Anytime Brett Sniffen is the head coach of a team, you know that they are going to come in and they will, uh, they would walk over uh, their mother to beat you and they would walk over your mother to beat you as well. We'll be right back on BikeFortBend.com. Lee Netty Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Lee Netty Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Lee Netty Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. Well, folks, you know, we like full disclosure at VipeFortBend.com, and one thing that we want to bring up is that, uh, well, hold on just a second. 
I want to tell you that Randall won the toss, but they deferred, and so Belton is going to get the football first, and they will receive at the west end of Trailer Stadium. And now to what I was about to say. It was kind of a funny thing. Um, you know, when everything shook down last last week and the final playoff qualifiers were decided, somehow District, let's see, 26A, the one that includes Fulcher, Foster, George Ranch, Straight Jesuit, and the A-Leaf schools, somehow ended up with A-Leaf Elsick going to the playoffs as the fourth qualifier. And so A-Leaf Elsick, because of its enrollment size, is going to be taking on the Katy Tigers. So you've got a 9-1 and team against a 2-8 and team. Well, tonight we have the Randall Lions, a 10-0 and team against a 2-8 and Belton team. Belton 2-3 and in their district games, and they lost the other five, and Coach Sniffen explained the injury situation. So it is what it is, and now the Randall Lions are just going to try to take care of business here in the first round. Cole Angel going to kick off for the Belton Tigers, and I said incorrectly just a moment ago, it is actually Randall, which is receiving because uh, Belton won the toss and deferred. And from the 23-yard line, Sincere Timpson trying to get a decent kickoff return, but he's not going to get much. In fact, correction, i got to tell you, it's a different guy. is Jalen Burton, who returned the ball for the Randall Lions, so he gets a return of negative two. They gave him forward progress to his own 31 as Randall moves from left to right, going from east to west as they try to get on the board first, taking on these Belton Tigers. Belton really looks like Nebraska with their uniforms, with the red pants, the white road jerseys with the scarlet numerals and the UCLA type striping on either shoulder. And for the Randall Lions, they are wearing their all black helmets, uniform pants, and jerseys. Tyler Skrobonik, play action pass on the first play. Looking deep down the field and he overshoots his man. He was trying to get it in the arms of Keelan Sweeney, who is playing receiver tonight to start the game. And Keelan Sweeney has started a whole bunch of football games at quarterback earlier in the year. And Skrobonik, who is going, I, I think it is fair to say and, and appropriate to say that he was expected to be the starter throughout the year but he had to kind of earn his job back. So, second down and 10, they give to Landon Williams, Callis up the middle, he is gone! 40, 35, 30, 25, 50, he's just pulling away. Touchdown, Landon Williams, Callis, and it comes from 69 yards, and it is six to nothing with 25 seconds elapsed on the scoreboard clock. So Randall struck quickly and you know, if you had the over-under on, uh, let's say, 100 yards for Landon williams Callis, well, you're looking pretty good right now if you took the over. 69-yard TD. Now Christian Mungia comes on to kick the extra point out of the hold of Keelan Sweeney. Good snap and hold, and the kick is up. The kick is high. It is deep. It is far. And it is almost all the way to the field house at the West End. So, 7 to nothing, Randall on top with 11.35 to go in the first quarter on BikeFortMan.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. My entire family's obsessed with all things Wicked, but my kids can't stop watching the trailer, and now they're having a Wicked-themed sleepover. Do you think our internet can handle all of the streaming and memeing going on? Well, we've engineered our Xfinity gateways to handle hundreds of devices at once, so they can all stay magically connected. Wow. Are you a wizard? I wish. No. Just someone that won't let a bad connection burst your internet bubble. Now through December 31st, get thrillifyingly fast Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for 12 months when you add unlimited mobile. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included at no extra cost. Or lock in your internet price for two years for just $5 more a month with a one-year contract. Early termination fee applies. Go to Xfinity.com to learn more and keep the magic going from your screen to the big screen. And see Wicked, only in theaters November 22nd. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto for bank account. Equipment taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rate supply. Actual speeds vary. Christian Mungia to kick it off for the Randall Lions who scored in less than half a minute. They are leading seven to nothing over the Belton Tigers. 
Munguia usually good for a touchback. He can bomb the ball out of the end zone. Running toward the football, gets it in the air, and he does kick it deep. It's going to land in the end zone and touchback as the Randall Lions return specialist downs it. Josiah Martinez, I believe, was the one that put his knee to the ground to bring it out to the 25-yard line. Belton's got to play mistake-free football. As you heard their, their coach, Brett Sniffen, say, they're just not as athletic as Randall is. They do go out of the spread formation, first and 10 from the 25. Play action pass and into the flat. They got a completion for two, maybe three yards. Quarterback Will Shepard threw one between the hash marks and the numbers on the far side. His receiver was Marlon Blunson. They gave him four yards at second down and six. Shepard wipes his hands on the towel, now looks to the near side, steps up in the pocket. Here comes the rush, and he can't get away. He is sacked by that outstanding defensive front for the Randall Lions. The pocket didn't collapse quickly. It just is kind of like shrinking laundry. LaJalen Miller comes out of there, and he was the first to hit Shepard. And that is a loss of four, so it's third down and ten as they scrimmage from their 25-yard line. Three receivers set, two to the far side, and one over here on the near side. Shepard calls for the snap as fullback moves over to the left side. And a give over the left side. And no, it's a quarterback keeper, and it's a two-yard gain. He did a great job of faking. Shepard faked it to his running back, who was coming to the near side. Then he... Tried to get through those black jerseys, but he just couldn't do it. Only just a three-yard gain, so it's fourth down and seven coming up. Graham Chambly comes in. He's going to punt it away. Sincere Timpson back to receive it at the 45. And the punt is in the air, angling toward the sideline, and it goes out of bounds short of the 50. So Randall will get the football back. Their defense forces a three and out. And they'll have a very short field to work with as they mark the ball at the 37. That's where will Randall, Randall will have it on their first play. We'll be back right after this. We are the volleyball school with three locations. Katie, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. Okay, well guess what? We're redoing the punt because Randall was offside. So Belton punts it away, and it is a low line drive, and this time it does get over the 50 and goes all down to the Randall 41-yard line. Sean Smith was back to receive the punt. I inaccurately said Sincere Timpson earlier. And so Randall gets the football again, this time at the 41-yard line, 69 yards away, or 59 yards away, I should say from the Belton end zone. Spread formation, Landon williams Callis to the right of Tyler Skrabonik, two receivers to either side. They're kind of stacked right behind each other near the numbers. Give to Landon williams Callis, slanting over the left side and good reaction by the Belton defense. They hold him to a gain of only one on that second carry by Landon williams Callis. Adam Gonzalez, outside linebacker on the tackle for the Belton Tigers. There is a fine military presence in the Belton, Waco, Temple, Killeen area. And it does often provide teams with outstanding athletes. But as Coach Sniffen said, sometimes Uncle Sam moves mom or moves dad. And uh, they don't have those 
those uh, players anymore. Sincere Timpson running left, breaks tackles, comes to the near side, stiffing, stiff arming a man, and Brett gets away from about five guys, gets across the 50, he's inside the 45, and all the way down to the 41 yard line of Belton. And a penalty flag flies in right at the end of the play. Graham Chambly made the tackle, and I wonder what's going on here. Ronnie Morgan is our referee, and hopefully you'll be able to hear his explanation of why the penalty flag was thrown. Well, it is going to be against Randall. That I know. All right, so it is a personal foul against Randall from the spot of the foul. So that means that now they have a second down and seven. So they didn't get that first down on the great run by Sincere Timpson, who escaped about six tackles. Now it's an empty backfield. Gramonic with five receivers in the pattern, three of them to the left of the field. The other side, I should say, swing pass to Timpson, a little tunnel screen, and he tunnels forward for only three yards. And it's going to be third down and four for the Randall Lions. Mason Mixon now comes on. He's a good-looking tight end. He's got some speed to him, and he kind of reminds me, although he's not quite as big, of Brock Bowers, that tight end that came out of Georgia and is now playing in the NFL as a rookie. Now, when it's third down and four, that does not necessarily mean a passing down for these Randall Lions. When you have Landon Williams Callis in your backfield. Mixon goes in motion to the left. And a little swing out there to Landon Williams Callis. And he fights for the first down. And Belton reacted so beautifully, they held him to a gain of one. And it's going to be fourth down and three. Brock Baker on the tackle for the Belton Tigers. And Randall's going to have to punt it away. Perry Kindred comes on. I'll make sure I got the right uh, ID. Yeah, it's Perry Kindred who's going to do the punting. He's standing at his own 38 and a half yard line. He's going to throw out of it. He steps up. He lost the football. Belton picks it up. This may be a scoop and score for the Tigers. They're going all the way. Touchdown, Belton Tigers. That was a fake punt that was completely botched as Kindred thought he could step up between two punt rushers and one of them stripped it out of his hands and running it all the way in was Graham Chambly. So we've got a 7-6 game. 7-0-1 to go in the first quarter and Belton ready to kick an extra point here. Their kicker is Cole Angel, and that kick is a line drive. Not real pretty, but it goes between the uprights, and we are tied at 7 with 7.01 to go in the first quarter. Belton strikes. They get a big play, and they're going to need some of those to stay with the Randall Lions here tonight on VipeFortBend.com. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting schools and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. Cole Angel, who just added the extra point to tie this game at seven, has the ball teed up. And it's a little pop-up kick, and it comes down at the 35-yard line. Running to the right and trying to get away. Sean Smith can't get anything on that return in fact he was dropped for a loss of three 
Billy Young made the tackle for the Tigers on that kickoff coverage, and I think that's a good strategy, and it's nothing against Sean Smith, but with the depth they're getting on that kick and getting a good rush, and if Sean Smith continues to try to move it from the far side of the field all the way across to the near side, Belton has reacted very well to that. 34-yard line, Skrabonic in the spread. And to give off the right side, Landon William Callis, zigging and zagging, gets the sideline, he may be gone. 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! 66 yards, no flags, and the Randall Lions get yet another touchdown. So on the two carries that went for touchdowns, Landon Williams Callis has run for 135 yards. He had another run for just one. And it's getting pretty overwhelming already. Keelan Sweeney on to hold for Christian Mungia on the extra point kick. The snap and hold look good and the kick is also good. Our new score, 14 to seven. Randall on top of Belton. We'll be right back on ByteFortBend.com, your one and only broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School Sports. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston this January, featuring Olympic medalist Misha Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars. With the action kicking off on January 9th, visit lovb.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. The kickoff comes down to the goal line, and Belton is going to return it, but only to the 14-yard line. Outstanding hit, sprinting down the field for the Lions was Ashton Johnson. And I believe the guy that returned it, you know, who probably is feeling it, Evan Echipari, a sophomore wide receiver. So the ball at the 15-yard line is Belton who didn't get any offensive points on their first possession, but, but scored on special teams. Have Shepard drop back, throws a screen, caught in the middle of the field, and the ball knocked loose as soon as the intended receiver caught it. Oh, my goodness. Joseph Nwoko. I think I have the right ID on the man who made the hit on that play. Actually, I have my doubts. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch exactly who made that hit. Second down and 10 for Belton. Shepard hands it off up the middle. Heavy traffic, nowhere to go. And it's going to be a tackle for loss of about three yards. And it's hard to even see through all those black jerseys who is carrying the football for Belton. Chase Sims made the tackle and... You can count on that happening a lot. Chase Sims is an absolute stud on a stud defense. He's the one that stands out the most. So they did give credit to the running back for getting back to the line of scrimmage. And now Shepard is going to fake a handoff and keep it to the right, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. He can't. He's dropped for a loss of two. Coming up out of the secondary, DeCorian Rubin. And I gotta correct myself again. The tackle was actually made by Blake Thompson. Number eight, left cornerback. Fourth down and 12 and Belton punting again. There it goes. It is blocked by Randall. It's loose in the end zone and the Lions recover it for a touchdown.
It is Sean Smith. He hasn't been able to do much on kickoff returns, but he blocked the punt and he recovered it in the end zone and it is 20 to seven. Randall on top. And we still have five minutes and 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. Christian Mungia on to add the extra point. The kick is up and the kick is good. 21 to seven, Randall Lyons will be right back on bikefortman.com, 516 left in the first. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAndAuto.com Well, somebody's car alarm is going off somewhere in the Trailer Stadium parking lot. I know it's not mine. Mine doesn't sound like that. 21 to seven, Randall over Belton. And Mungia ready to kick it off again. Has it teed up on the far hash mark. Blasts it away. And it gets into the end zone and Belton will not return it. It'll come out to the 25 yard line. First and 10 after the touchback. By the way, when we come to you at halftime, we're going to have a great visit with Daniel Gotera. Those of you who have been in Houston for a while remember when he was a sports reporter and anchor for KHOU Channel 11, and now he works with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. He's got a lot of great stories to tell, and he'll talk about his role, which he's been in for, I guess, a couple of years now. All right, Shepard looks down the field, now throws to the sideline, and his pass is incomplete. He tried to get it to his running back, Gino Zecca. Incomplete pass makes it second down and 10. On the coverage for Randall, number 21, Pat Oliver, defensive back. Ball basically right in the middle of the field and Shepard fakes a draw, throws to the right flat, gets a completion, gets a nice block, and it's a first down for the Belton Tigers. All right, I got a, a roster from Coach Sniffen last night that didn't have a number 31 on it, so I'd love to tell you who number 31 is, but there isn't a 31 on my roster. Darn it. I got a different one. Let me check that one. No, no 31 on that one either. Sorry. All right, Shepard rolling to the left on first and 10. Throws near sideline. Tipped in, almost intercepted by these Randall Lions. Pat Oliver almost made the pick. The intended receiver was Colin Taylor, and he was well covered. Tashawn Williams of Randall was elbow to elbow with him. Second down and 10 from the 37 yard line for Belton. By the way, one play a go, that first down makes you think of First Tyrant Automotive with first or four great Fort Bend County locations. Check them out, firsttyrantauto.com. Shepard throws a pass into the right flat and it is swatted down. Blitzing in was Wayne Kelly and he knocked the football down, so it's incomplete, third down and 10. If you just joined us, 4.31 to go in the first quarter and Randall is already up by a score of 21 to seven. Len and Williams Callis with two touchdown runs, one of 69 yards, another from 66, and a blocked punt recovered in the end zone. Those were the three Randall touchdowns. Third down and 10, Shepard fakes the handoff, throws near side, got his man, breaking one tackle, but not a second one. Going down at the 39 yard line is Gavin Ross. And let's see who blew him up. 
Chase Sims. Chase Sims plays in the interior of the defensive line, but he found his way out into the passing lanes to make the big hit there. Pat Oliver to receive the punt. The snap is a good one, and Blake Thompson, I'm sorry, uh, Graham Chambly gets it away, and Randall won't get a chance to return it. It go, is blown dead, or picked up, rather, at the 24-and-a-half yard line. Hustling down to get it, Colin Sally, one of the captains for Belton tonight. Another captain, Keegan Sherwood, is one of those many injured players that Coach Sniffen talked about in the Countdown to Kickoff show. He was a captain but had to go out there, and he's basically still wearing a boot. And I can't remember if he was on crutches or just kind of if it was a walking boot. So they put the ball right at the 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Lions. Empty backfield for Tyler Scribonic. And it's a little toss sweep to uh, Landon williams Callis coming across the backfield, and he gains about six. Tracking him down. Nice, nice job by David Plans. The sophomore linebacker staying up with Landon williams Callis, who got a head start. He was lined up as a slot receiver on the far side, was running across, and... It was just a, a pass that traveled about one foot into his hands. Seven yard pickup, it's second down and three. Skrbonic stepping up, might be changing the play. Blitz look by Belton, as they have four men with their hands down on the ground and about three others who are leaning in there like they want to eat Tyler Skrbonic for lunch. He drops back, throws over the middle. Got a completion! Nice catch by DeCorian Rubin. He's loose inside the 25. Still going. Fights to the 10 and down. Finally, Belton runs him down. Caleb Heacock saved a touchdown, but it's first and goal, or actually first and 10, right outside the 10 for the Lions. Well, I'll tell you what, Tyler Skrbonic knew exactly what to do against that heavy blitz, and DeCorian Rubin just slanted from the left side right over the middle, made the catch, and then bent his, his path back out toward the far sideline, and they finally got him. Now we'll see how the Lions attack it. Skrbonic fakes to Landon williams Callis, throws a fade route. Keelan Sweeney turns around, but it's broken up incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 from just outside the 10. Matthew Sowey with a nice play on defense. 2.50 to go in this first quarter and it is 21 to seven. Skrbonic with Landon Williams Callis to his left, takes the snap. Hands it off, there goes Callis, trying to get to the edge on the right side. There he goes, 10-5, inside the pylon, touchdown. Third touchdown of the game for Landon williams Callis, And this one comes from 10 yards out. And the route is on, it is 27-7 and we're not even out of the first quarter. Got to feel bad for the folks from Belton who drove three hours to get here. Mungia's kick is up over the tops of the uprights. And good. 28-7 is our score. We'll be back. FightFortMen.com. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalist Misha Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit lovb.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Can't wait for that January launch of Love Houston Volleyball, L-O-B-B.com. They'll be playing at the Fort Bend Epicenter. And speaking of volleyball, we are hoping for a certain result tomorrow night. Fulcher takes on Katie Cinco Ranch at the Merrill Center. Meanwhile, we'll be here at Trailer Stadium 
broadcasting the Fulcher Chargers football playoff opener against Katie Pato. And we're hoping that we have good news about the volleyball match because if the Fulcher girls win tomorrow night, then wherever they go on Tuesday or, well, whenever it is, we will follow them to their their uh, state semifinal is what it's going to amount to. The way, new format that they have as the, by the way, uh, Mungia kicked it into the end zone, through the end zone actually, and there's another touchback. So we're hoping that Fulcher can get into that state semifinal, and then if they go to the state final, the Saturday before Thanksgiving and Garland will be there. First and 10 from the 25. Shepard hands it off up the middle. A little bit of running room for a, a gain of one, perhaps two yards. That's Gino Zecca. He's one of the captains, so Keegan Sherwood, who's injured, Colin Sally, and Gino Zecca were the three captains that I identified for Belton during the pregame ceremonial coin toss. Coin tosses that are real are done about 45 minutes before before the uh, actual one that you see on the field. And a timeout is taken by Randall before they snap the ball on second down and nine after that one yard gain by Zeka. We'll be right back. Lee Nettie Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Lee Nettie Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Leonetti Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. By the way, um, Rosie Bega, the silent partner inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters, lets me know that we have been buffering a bit, so I hope that uh, we didn't drop out when you were in the middle of listening, listening to a play that you really wanted to hear. All right, here we go. After that timeout, second down and nine. There's a nice pass, but it is off the fingertips, incomplete. Josiah Martinez, the intended receiver, and Shepard hung in there against a heavy rush, but it falls incomplete, so it'll be third down and nine with 1.58 to go in the first quarter, and it's 28 to seven. Randall on top of Belton. Receiver to the near side is Colin Taylor. He's in one-on-one coverage against Pat Oliver. Shepard fakes the handoff, gets the ball out of his hand quickly, throws, and he's got a first down catch across the 35 to the 36. Threw it in heavy traffic, but it was right on target. And the pass is complete. That'll be a first down for Okay, I believe the pass receiver there was Josiah Martinez, and he gets it to the 35, and that's a first down. Think of First Hiron Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsthironauto.com. All right, another swing pass to the near side, and that works as well. Colin Taylor makes the catch, and he picks up six. Bumped out of bounds. Ryan Mallory making the play for the Lions. And, you know, on the previous play, they did not have a first down. They uh, Actually, they did, and they gained 10 more on this play. So two consecutive plays with exactly 10 yards gained, and now they have a first down at the 45. Ball on the near hash mark. Shepard looking at a possible blitz. Fakes the handoff, keeps it, can't get out of the backfield. He is buried for a loss of one. Kerry, uh, Kerry Spires, the fourth on the play for Randall along with Ryan Mallory for a loss of one. Second down and 11. Belton trailing 28 to seven with less than a minute to go in the first quarter. They have it at their own 44.
All right, Shepard wipes the hands on the towel in the waistband, fakes the handoff, throws to the right side. His receiver shakes a tackle, makes his way forward. Gavin Ross, nice effort on the play, but the Randall defense is just so thorough. It's really hard to get away from them. Jalen Miller finished off the tackle. It's a gain of three, and it's third down and eight for the Tigers. And we've just had the final play of the first quarter. We'll be back on BikeFortBend.com. 28-7, Randall dominating thus far over Belton. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. My entire family's obsessed with all things Wicked, but my kids can't stop watching the trailer, and now they're having a Wicked-themed sleepover. Do you think our internet can handle all of the streaming and memeing going on? Well, we've engineered our Xfinity gateways to handle hundreds of devices at once, so they can all stay magically connected. Wow. Are you a wizard? I wish. No. Just someone that won't let a bad connection burst your internet bubble. Now through December 31st, get thrillifyingly fast Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for 12 months when you add unlimited mobile. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included at no extra cost. Or lock in your internet price for two years for just $5 more a month with a one-year contract. Early termination fee applies. Go to Xfinity.com to learn more and keep the magic going from your screen to the big screen. And see Wicked, only in theaters November 22nd. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan, auto pay bank account, equipment taxes and extra after promo regular rate supply actual speeds vary all right so we flip it over and now these belt and tigers are trying to advance from east to west here at trailer stadium they trail 28 to 7 and they've got a third down and eight as they scrimmage from their own 47. shepherd takes the snap hands it off straight up the middle it's a decent gain of three yards but five yards shy of the first down as he handed it off to Gino Zecca. He hit it hard, but right there to bottle him, him up was Wayne Kelly. Fourth and five, and Will Belton punted away. It appears they're leaving the offense on the field. Josiah Martinez and Gavin Ross are the receivers on the near side. Two over on the other side as well. Dropping back as Shepard has to get rid of it quickly. Over the middle and it's intercepted by these Randall Lions and Sherrod Rivas is bringing it back inside the 30, 25, 20, 15 and bumped out just shy of the 10. The suffocating defense of the Randall Lions harassing Shepard into an interception. He had to get rid of the football so quickly that his receiver had not even turned around to look for it. And in the first minute of this second quarter, Randall is already threatening. They have it at the 11 with a first and 10. Jackson Montelongo and Keelan Sweeney, the receivers on the near side and over on the far side, it's DeCorey and Rubin. Rubin with a big play that got Randall set up for their fourth touchdown. Tyler Skrabonik with Sincere Timpson to his left. Hands it off, no, he fakes it, and he throws it over on the left side. It is, it is Mixon who makes the catch and advances for five yards down to the six. Now give him six down to the five. Second down from there. Mason Mixon. No relation to Joe Mixon of the Texans. Well, you can anticipate some really tough playoff matchups as Randall moves forward in these playoffs. And having a game like this one might be very handy if they can, you know, take uh, the second half easy. Sincere Timpson diving down toward the goal line and he gets in. Just got his elbows and the football across the plane before he went down and it is a touchdown that makes it 34 to seven. So far, these Randall Lions making it look like child's play. So while we are bringing you the halftime enjoyment with Daniel Gotera, the former sportscaster from Channel 11, 
And now a very important person in the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. We can be rounding up scores and let you know what is going on on Thursday night on the first round of the playoffs. There are going to be some games that you will want to know about. The kick is up and good by Mungia, and that makes it 35-7. to 7. 10.50 to go in the first half. This is VibeFortBend.com. Wow, 35-7, to 7, Randall over Belton. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalist Misha Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Welcome back. Belton ready to receive, trailing 35-7 to with 10.50 to go in the half, and Mungia boots the football, and this, uh, this one's not coming back. It bounces halfway into the end zone and then rolls out the back. Tomorrow night, our coverage is the Fulcher Chargers against the Katy Pato Panthers. From right here at Trailer Stadium, we kick off at 7. We begin the countdown to kickoff show at 6.45 p.m. Well, Belton doing its best. They look like they are outmanned by these Randall Lions. Shepard fakes a handoff, releases quickly, far sideline, and catch made just across midfield. Oh, what a great catch. That was Gavin Ross, and it was a 50-50 ball, basically, as he went up and was fighting with Blake Thompson, and he came down with it. And that is a first down at the 46 of these Randall Lions. So let's see, 10, 20, 29-yard catch. And that's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. Low snap. Shepard grabs it, fakes a handoff, runs right, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is as far as he gets. Chase Sims. So thick, so quick. He can. He's all over you, you know, kind of like an ice cream cone in July. Before you know it, he is, well, all over you. But they do give a gain of one yard for Shepard on that play. The running back to his right, Gino Zecca. And a quick throw, left side, and it's incomplete. Josiah Martinez tried to run a little bit before he had secured the catch, and it's incomplete, so it's third down and nine coming up. It's way different from the way it used to be in the first round of the playoffs for teams from Fort Bend ISD and some teams from Lamar Consolidated ISD. The Fort Bend ISD teams used to have to play Katie in the first round, not so anymore. But there's a flip side to that as Shepard takes the snap on third and nine, throws, and it's a catch for a first down. I'm not sure if that's Achilles Palomares or Caleb Cheney. It's Achilles Palomares, junior receiver, got it to the 39. So it's going to be a makeable fourth and three for the Belton Tigers. Under nine and a half minutes to go in this first half, 35 to seven. It's been all Randall Lions. Their defense has been flexing its muscle with all kinds of different players, and Landon williams Callis has scored three touchdowns. Fake by Shepard. Tries to run it up the middle. Can't get anywhere. Carey Spires, the fourth. Do we need to call him the fourth? Is dad or granddad really famous? I know dad or granddad didn't play for Randall. That wouldn't be possible. You know, this is only the second school year that the Randall Lions have had seniors 
in their school. And then the first year that they had seniors, their girls made it all the way to the state basketball semifinals. And we were in San, uh, San Antonio to broadcast that for you. Well, that last play was a fourth down, and so the ball goes over on downs. Randall has it from its own 43, empty backfield for Scribonic. Man comes in motion, that's Landon Williams Callis. They fake it to him, and a throw to the near sideline, and it's caught for a first down and more. It's Sean Smith, cuts back to the middle, and signals that he made a first down at the 30-yard line. And by the way, I think I misidentified the guy who blocked the kick and ran it in or jumped on it in the end zone. Jalen Burton is the one who did that. Scribonic throws over to the right side, and he throws a completion to Sean Smith. It's going to be for a loss, though. He dropped back four yards to catch that quick pass from Scribonic, but Belton really read it well and jumped all over it, so it's a loss of five yards, as a matter of fact. Second down and 15. Second down and 15. There haven't been too many negative plays for the Lions tonight. Scribonic out of the spread. Fakes to Landon Williams Callis, pump short, throws over the middle. Keelan Sweeney's got it. In stride, 10, 5, touchdown, Randall Lyons. Keelan Sweeney, who threw quite a few touchdown passes in the first half of the season, catches one here. And that just makes the blowout even bigger. We're not even, well, we're just halfway through the second quarter, and it's 41 to 7 with the extra point to come. We have so many football teams in Fort Bend County to choose from, and whose game do we do early on as Mungia makes the extra point? It is high, it is a rainbow over the end zone, and it's good to make it 42 to seven. Well, sometimes you gotta dance with the prettiest girl, and you know, well, literally, we, you dance with the prettiest girl, but figuratively, when we make selections about which game to do, we kind of dance with the prettiest girl, and you know, Randall looking pretty good right now. I realize this is kind of a mismatch in the first game of the playoffs, but they are a strong team. No doubt, we'll come back. Mungia will kick off when we return. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVV.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Well, Mungia's kickoff was not a touchback. Belton did return it. They got it across the 20, but just one yard past the 20 with Gino Zecca, their running back. Tomorrow night, we've got the Fulcher Chargers taking on Katie Pato. And uh, for a change, you know, we went the entire football regular season 11 weeks and we had at least one Saturday game every single week and we won't have a Saturday game in this first week of the playoffs first and 10 from the 21 for Belton Ronnie Morgan our referee says ball is ready for play and Shepard takes the snap throws left ball caught six yard pickup And Gavin Ross gets up slowly and steps, steps off the field. He's kind of holding his rib cage. I think Wayne Kelly finished off that tackle. Second down and four after the six yard pickup. Belton is actually playing pretty well offensively. It's the interceptions that are hurting Shepard has a little bit of time, flushed over to the right, throws near sideline, and it's incomplete. 
He was trying to reach Achilles Palomares, but right with him was Pat Oliver. Third down and four coming up. And do we have a flag on the play? Or do we just have a football that got away from Ronnie Morgan, our referee? Okay, it was just the, you know, they switch out the football nearly every play. And I guess the the football that was just used didn't get off the field till the last instant. Now a slant pass, incomplete. Shepard threw it on target to Colin Taylor, but uh, right there to kind of poke it out. Very uh, expertly was Jaquin Parker of your Randall Lions, and it's a three and out. Time for yet another punt. Graham Chambly goes in there and two guys back to receive it for Randall. You've got DeCorian Rubin and Blake Thompson. The punt comes out low. It is partially blocked and recovered at the 29-yard line. And coming off the field, celebrating yet again another blocked punt for Jalen Burton. Also back there in the backfield was Cameron Hippolyte, but I'm going to assume that Jalen Burton got it because of the way he's celebrating. So I believe that is two blocked punts for him tonight. 6.01 to go in the second quarter. 42-7, Randall on top of Belton. Skrbonic in the gun. And I don't know if that's sincere. Timpson or Landon Williams Callis to his right. It is Timpson. He gives it to him as he heads left. Turns it up between tacklers. He's inside the 20. And ankle tackle near the 16. That might have gone all the way. Great play, though, from uh, Belton's Sebastian Magana. And now they play quickly and up the middle with sincere Timpson. He slams ahead on first and 10. Gets four more down to the 12. So on that previous play, it was a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. Landon Williams Callis comes on, replaces Sincere Timpson. Second down and six, the ball at the 12. On the near hash mark as Randall heads from right to left, that is from west to east. Mixon goes in motion. Fake to Landon Williams Callis and Skrbonic untouched. Keeper around the right side for a touchdown. As Randall offense and defense making just about everything look pretty easy. And that touchdown makes it 48 to seven with 5.03 to go in the third quarter. I can't imagine that the game we bring you tomorrow between Fulcher and Katie Pato is going to be this one-sided, but you never know. Munguia's kick up and good. Wow, 49 to 7, almost half a hundred scored points, uh, points scored in the first half, and we still have 5:02 to go. This is VibeFortBend.com. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first tire and automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAndAuto.com. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. 
Our volleyball coverage is always presented by the Volleyball School. And we're hoping, crossing our fingers, that the Fulshire girls will defeat Katie Cinco Ranch tomorrow night. They'll be playing while the football team is playing here at Trailer. The Fulshire football team against Katie Pato and over at the Merrill Center in basically the championship of Region 3 of Class 6A Division 1 volleyball. From the 22-yard line and running to the left, that is Gino Zeka turns it up and he picks up 12, 13 yards and a first down for the Belts and Tigers. That's a first down. Think of first tire in Automoto. <laughs> Think of first tire in Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. 12-yard pickup to the 34. Belton hustles up to the line. Shepard in the gun, takes the snap, gives to Zecker around the left side, and he finds about three yards, hustling through that always fast-pursuing Randall defense. Jaquin Parker made another tackle, and Chase Sims as well. Chase Sims is just a fearsome-looking football player. Chance Hernandez, a big part of what what these Randall Lions do on defense as well. Second down and six. Shepard, play fake, near side, leaping catch near the goal line, or near the goal line, line of scrimmage. And it's a pickup of three. Some nice moves from Gavin Ross, who was kind of holding his ribs a few plays earlier on an earlier possession. But he makes the catch there, and it sets up a third down and two for Belton. And we're under four minutes to go in the half. 49-7. to seven, Randall making it look like child's play here tonight. Shepard hands it off, running left, trying to get out of the backfield. It's tough to do. And a one-yard gain. That is it for Damian Tuyumalu. I believe it's Damian Tuyumalu. He wears number 85. Now, I might have misidentified him, but that's who it is. So uh, he's listed as a defensive lineman. And he doesn't wear the number 85, nor look the part of a running back, but he carried it right there. And it's going to set up a fourth and less than one for Belton from their own 43, and they'll go for it. We've just passed the three-minute mark in the second quarter. Now under center and doing the tush push, I think they get Shepard across the line to gain for the first down. And they do. That's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. They get it to the 45 just enough to move the sticks. Daniel Gotera is our halftime guest. He's young. He's personable. Well, to me, he's young. He's probably middle-aged, but he looks young. And now a nice pass, and Belton gets another first down. A little stop route. They hit Colin Sally. He just turns around after catching the pass and advances to the 41-yard line. 15-yard pickup and a first down in Randall territory. The only belt and touchdown came on a, a botched fake punt by Randall. There goes Zeka running left, breaks tackles to get out of the backfield, and he gets a scant one yard almost to the 40. So it'll be second down, and we'll call it nine. And the clock under two minutes now, still ticking. So in addition to Daniel Gotera, we'll bring you every score that we can here on Thursday night in the first round of the Texas high school playoffs. Fake handoff, Shepard throws left side, got a completion. His receiver tries the inside and finds only two yards. That's it. Colin Taylor just finding black Randall Lions jerseys everywhere. And a timeout is taken by these uh, Belt and Tigers, and we'll take it with them with 1.22 to go in the half, 49-7 Lions. We shall return. 
Be the first to know. Sign up for the first tire and automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAndAuto.com. All right, so I always like to promote what we're doing next week, but this is playoff time for both volleyball and football, so we really don't know exactly what we're going to be doing. But we'll let you know as soon as it becomes clear. Third down and eight, stepping up, uh, and an interception. An interception. Here comes Randall bringing one back. This is their third of the half. And a nice return by Jaquin Parker. Carries it inside the 45 to about the 41. And, you know, someone, one of his teammates, Deshaun Williams, was helping him out help with a block. And Deshaun Williams kind of had to get up slowly from the 41. And that's where he returned it to. He being Jaquin Parker. They actually spot him right at the 40. And with 106 to go in the half, we'll see how the Randall Lions play it. They lead it 49 to 7, and they are looking every bit as good as they are reputed to be. Here in the first half of their first playoff game, Tyler Skrobonik out of the gun, rolls to the right, looking down the field, and he throws it towards the end zone. Keelan Sweeney incomplete poked away at the last instant that's an outstanding play and the guy is way down in the corner and i gotta see who it is keelan sweeney is down all right i believe the guy who made the play was a zion wilkinson he is a sophomore defensive back and keelan sweeney is still down that is trouble you're counting on him as part of the Randall offensive attack. The trainer's down there. Checking him out. We'll take a break and be back. Hopefully Keelan's okay. This is VibeFortMen.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. My entire family's obsessed with all things Wicked, but my kids can't stop watching the trailer, and now they're having a Wicked-themed sleepover. Do you think our internet can handle all of the streaming and memeing going on? Well, we've engineered our Xfinity gateways to handle hundreds of devices at once, so they can all stay magically connected. Wow. Are you a wizard? I wish. No. Just someone that won't let a bad connection burst your internet bubble. Now through December 31st, get thrillifyingly fast Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for 12 months when you add Unlimited Mobile. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included at no extra cost. Or lock in your internet price for two years for just $5 more a month with a one-year contract. Early termination fee applies. Go to Xfinity.com to learn more and keep the magic going from your screen to the big screen. And see Wicked, only in theaters November 22nd. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay for bank account. Equipment taxes and fees extra after promo regular rate supply actual speeds vary well keelan sweeney got to his feet and he's walking very slowly behind the end zone with the guidance of trainers and meanwhile back at the 40 yard line 56 seconds to go in the first half randall perhaps trying to get one more touchdown before they go to the locker room but they're in control of this game all the way 49 to 7 and skrobonic in the gun takes the snap Gives to Landon Williams. Callis heads right. Gets across the 45-40 near the sideline. Tight roping it and goes out of bounds. Inside the 25 at about the 23. They rule that he stepped out at the 26, but that is a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. A 14-yard pickup for Landon Williams Callis, who is closing in on the 200-yard mark just in the first half alone. 47 seconds to go. Skrobonik, long count, rolls to the left, looking sideline, got a catch. That's a beauty. And it's a first down at the 15-yard line. Cedric McClintock with the catch on a little stop route where he kind of angled back toward the sideline. 
Very good clock management. Not that they are under any kind of pressure with this big lead, but you can kind of work on some things and and work on the two-minute offense as if you really, really, really needed something right before the half. Skrabonic might be changing the play. 43 seconds to go from the 15. He fakes the handoff, throws to the right side, and this one's going nowhere to Sean Williams. Wait a minute. No, instead it's uh, DeCorian Rubin caught the ball, was tackled immediately, and the Lions used their final timeout, but the scoreboard clock is still ticking. It's down to 23. 22. Now they stop it. There should be more time on the clock, but with it, 49-7. to I mean, you know, no big deal. As uh, the greenskeeper Carl Spackler said in Caddyshack, we'll keep it right here. So that is Randall's last time out. And, you know, another thing they might want to work on here. Let's say, uh, let's say they throw incomplete on second down. And then on third down, if they throw something that is short of the, of the first down line to gain, they might rush on their kicker, Christian Mungia, and add a short field goal. They could do that. Sometimes it's good to be able to do that very quickly for a situation where you're near the end of a period and you have no timeouts. All right, so McClintock and Jackson Montelongo on the near side, DeCorian Rubin on the far side. Landon Williams Callis to the left of Tyler Skrabonic. Fake handoff to Landon and a throw over the middle. Jackson Montelongo, touchdown. And it comes from 14 yards out. And Randall has exceeded 50 points in the first half. Jackson Montelongo, son of the principal of Randall High School, the only principal that Randall High School has ever had. And the band whooping it up as Mungia comes on to add the extra point. 19 seconds will remain in the first half. Mungia's kick is up and it is good and is out of Jackson Montelongo's hold because Keelan Sweeney is injured. They had to switch holders, and Jackson is equal to the task. 56-7. We'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com. Leanetti Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Leonetti Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Leonetti Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston this January. Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players, from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars, with the action kicking off on January 9th. Visit lovb.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. Okay, Christian Mungia's kickoff went down to the one-yard line, and one of the Belton players called for a fair catch. So that puts the ball at the 25 with 19 seconds to go in this first half, and it's been all Randall, 56-7. to Quite a debut. Their first-ever playoff game broadcasted on VibeFortBend.com. Shepard hands off, and it's going to be a no-gainer. I think that is Zeka. Who was hit really hard by Jaquin Parker, who had an interception in this half. And that'll be it for the first half. 56 to 7. We'll be back with Daniel Gotera, our halftime guest, right after this on VibeFortBend.com. We are the volleyball school with three locations. 
Haiti, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. Welcome to Halftime on VibeFortBend.com. Glad to have you with us. And it's a great opportunity here to talk to our old friend, Daniel Gotera. I'm sure you remember him as a sports reporter and anchor at KHOU Channel 11. Now he's with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. Daniel, welcome in and tell us about your role. Well, thanks for having me, Roger. Appreciate it. Always enjoy the work that you guys do at, at Vibe and all the high school coverage that you do. It's really valuable, right? Because I think... I think a lot of people are passionate about it and they just need access to it. So this is good stuff. So thanks for having me on. I am a communications director here at the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. And we do a bunch of stuff for the community when it comes to sports engagement with the city of Houston and in Harris County. And it allowed me to transition from Channel 11 to come to the Houston Sports Authority and still be involved in sports. I run the Hall of Fame for us, the Houston Sports Hall of Fame. I do stuff for the sports awards. So a little bit of everything to, to stay engaged. Outstanding. So I remember back when I was a teenager, and that was a long time ago, like Carter administration long time ago, but there was a Houston Sports Authority at the time then, and I remember vaguely a man's name, Sidney Schlenker. Does that name ring any bell with you, or have there been many changes in, in leadership of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority? So this iteration of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority was started after the Oilers left town in the late or mid 90s and then there was some rumblings that the Astros and the Rockets wanted new stadiums and they were possibly leaving so the city government city and county government got together and they decided to form this entity in the late 90s to make sure that our professional sports teams are taken care of and the stadiums are built and the taxpayers were able to fund that as well so this iteration started then that's a name that I I'm not too familiar with but I I appreciate your memory on well, it well, maybe you shouldn't appreciate my memory because it might be a little bit inaccurate. It, that might have been some other kind of entity that might have had the word authority in its name, but it may not have any connection to where you are now. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think it does, but I, you know, there's always been that need to you know, fulfill that sports appetite right here in, in town. And that's why we're here and we want to make sure everyone is happy and all the teams are satisfied. Absolutely. I mean, I know the heartache of teams leaving, so... Anything you can do to bring great events here and make sure the teams stay, that's a good thing. All right, so you did such great work at KHOU Channel 11, but there was something kind of outside of what you did on air. This documentary about Marshall Buffs football called The Program, and I, I wondered, first of all, have you done work on any other such film, or was that the only film that you produced? So, yeah, while I was at Channel 11, I had the idea to do something outside of the normal news realm, right? Because I think there is a little bit of a need for that type of content, sports content that just kind of dives deeper right. into uh, sports stories, into communities. So I came up with the idea of the program. We did four episodes while I was at Channel 11, actually. We did Marshall, we did North Shore, we did Pearland, and then we did Santa Fe after the school shooting for their first football game after the shooting happened down there in Santa Fe. So it was a great series. I loved everything about it. Coach James Williams down at Marshall is one of my favorites. Uh, Lloyd Banks, the whole crew down there at Marshall, I love. I'm always going to have a special place in my heart for those folks because they really opened up the doors. So when you do shows like that, you really have to have the trust of the coaching staffs and of the players that will take care of them. And we did. We put microphones on all of them. You saw the show. And it was a really, it was a great time uh, that we had with Marshall. But ever since I left Channel 11, now that I've joined the Sports Authority, we did do a documentary on Andre Johnson going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which was really cool. We got to go to Canton with him. And we put a whole documentary on it. And it's airing right now on Space City Home Network. That's outstanding. I just love the opportunity to shine the light on great accomplishments and especially great people like Andre Johnson and I love James Williams and Lloyd Banks and they've done such great things for Marshall. So uh, that was that was a wonderful thing in every way except for one and I, I know you'll take this in the lighthearted way that it's intended. It was 2021 and the Buffs had been to the state championship game the previous two years. And then after you 
you did the program documentary. They lost to Barbers Hill in the first round of the playoffs. Did did any grief about that somehow get back to you? Oh, I know. I did, I did get teased about it. I was like, what did you do to us? You kind of cursed us a little bit. I know. It, it was crazy. Pearland, the same thing happened to them. They, You know, that year when we did Pearland's documentary, Tony Heath stepped down. And so they had a really kind of a crazy year when we joined us. So I felt like that was kind of following us. And I felt bad there for our last one for Marshall. But they kind of took it in stride. That was a great Marshall team. But Barbers Hill was pretty solid, too. And by the way, back in 2010, when Pearland defeated Euless Trinity, I think that was, I don't know why, but it was my favorite state championship game where a Houston team, you know, beat someone from the DF dub. There have been a few others, but that one just stuck with me. And I, I like Tony Heath. I could talk to him for hours. All right, let's take a quick break. We're talking to Daniel Gotera, formerly of KHOU Channel 11, but now with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball, get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalist Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Welcome back to Halftime on VibeFortBend.com. we got playoff football today, and we're talking with Daniel Gotera of Harris County Houston Sports Authority. And, Daniel, a lot of people, I'm, I'm probably one of them. I'm definitely one of them. They probably don't know exactly what the HSA does. You kind of described that earlier. You want to make sure that the sports franchises stay here. And I know that Houston gets Final Fours, they get Super Bowls, they get international soccer events. So is there anything else that the Sports Authority does? Yeah, I mean, those are our two big responsibilities. First and foremost is obviously maintaining uh, the sports venues that we do own, as in Toyota Center, Minute Maid Park, Shell Energy Stadium, and even the rugby stadium as well. So we, we, that's our first priority, maintain the stadiums, make sure that the tenant is happy with what's going on in there, and make sure that everything is running smoothly with that. And we also do some uh, work down at NRG Park with the Texans, but that in and of itself as a separate entity, but we like to lend a helping hand there too. And then obviously sports marketing has been a huge uh, focus of us over the last couple of years. You know, we were able to bring the World Cup to town. That's coming up in a, about a year and a half now. And then the World Baseball Classic is coming up in 2026 as well. We have Junior Olympics that is coming to town next year. You mentioned the Final Fours, the Super Bowls, all that sort of stuff is coming to town. So we take all of that under our umbrella and we're pretty proud of it. Does every city in the United States that considers itself a major player for events like that and teams like that, do they have something like this or is this something special that not everybody has? Yeah, most cities have a sports commission. Um, you know, Dallas, Arlington area has a pretty strong sports commission as well. They've done a really nice job bringing things there too. L.A., obviously with the Olympics going there in 2028. Kansas City has a strong one too. So, yeah, most cities that are vying for some of these big international and national events has to have some organization. Now, our organization is a little different in the fact that we own the stadiums. So that gives us another layer of responsibilities. Uh, but yes, yeah, sports commissions are a very popular thing because they really help the city get on the map, so to speak, in the sports business. Also, I'm going back and thinking, I think this happened before you got here. It was in the early 2000s when Houston really made a serious bid with the United States Olympic Committee mm -hmm. to host you know, and then if you are the choice among the American cities, then you have to convince the International Olympic Committee that you're the, the place. And George de Montrand worked on that, did such a great job. Of course, they rejected it. They decided to go with, I, th I think it was San Francisco was their choice, but San Francisco didn't end up being the host uh, when the Olympic Games came along. But George and, and uh, the people that he, were work he was uh, working with on that, after it was over and they, the committee said no, they said, is there anything we could have done better? We want to know what we can do next time and maybe get a yes. They said, no, your presentation was perfect. And, and the, the layout, the facilities, everything was perfect. 
which makes me think, why didn't you choose Houston? And I, I just kind of have that that uh, Houston inferiority complex. I'm thinking, why not us? Yeah, I mean, look, it's pretty crazy now that I've been over here to kind of see the other side of the sports industry a little bit, just really how much it takes to go into some of these bids. Just recently, we bid for that World Baseball Classic, which is going to be huge at Minute Maid Park in March. It's basically... That's the that's the World Cup of baseball, right? You have the best players in the in the world playing here. We're going to have Team USA, Mexico. They're going to be here at Minute Maid. It's going to be an awesome atmosphere. But I didn't realize how much it went into that collaboration with the folks at Houston First, which run in the downtown district, and the Astros, and all that stuff rolled into one. So it, it's pretty actually pretty impressive to see us all working together on that. Yeah, and the local fans will be a little conflicted if Jose Val- uh, Jose Altuve is playing for Val- uh, Venezuela. I said Valenzuela because I'm thinking about Fernando. We lost him. Um, But uh, if Jose is playing for Venezuela, they might root for Venezuela just because they love (laughs) Jose so much if there are not enough Astros on the U.S. team. Yeah, no, that's cool. But I I think baseball has needed that for a long time, right? And it's gaining popularity. The last World Baseball Classic was huge. I remember being at a bar in Kansas City. During the NCAA tournament, I was over there with U of H while I was still at Channel 11. And people were actually watching the World Baseball Classic on TV, which is never – never been seen before so comes at a perfect time that's coming to houston all right can you spend a couple more minutes with us absolutely love this i love being interviewed by the way I do, i've done a lot of interviews but i love being interviewed well i also like that i met you at a high school sports venue i mean you were out there covering it and you know sometimes uh not all of the local sports anchors will get out to the high school games they'll just send the shooter but you were out there so good for you Daniel, we'll be right back on Viportmen.com. Playoff football, it's halftime. We'll be back in a moment. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first tire and automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAndAuto.com. We're talking with Daniel Gotera, who's been a greater Houston resident for a long time. He was with KHOU Channel 11 Sports, and now he's with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. And I just kind of wondered if the role that you're in now is something you maybe had an aspiration to do, or was there something that you were working toward in the sports casting business? And I noticed, I think during your you know, late in your time at, at KHOU, you, you also did some news anchoring. So how did this come up? And I'm sure you jumped on it very quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, actually, while I was at Channel 11, it was a period of transition for me because, you know, I had two little kids at home. Um, you're right. I've been in Houston since 1992. So this is this is I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah, this is this is home. I grew up here. I went to Cinco Ranch High School. And my wife is from Sci Falls High School. So, I mean, this is, this is home. This is where I wanted to be. I got back to Houston, worked at Channel 11 for a long time. But then I have two little kids. They're seven and four years old. I wanted a better schedule. Sports brings you to work on the weekends all the time. And there, I didn't want to miss some of those things. So I did do a little bit of news there towards the end. But then I got a call from the sports authority uh, and said, would you like to come in and do this role, be the producer of our sports awards show and be our director of communications? And I thought it was just the right time for me. Channel 11 was great. I did a lot of awesome things. I covered a lot of great events, met so many wonderful people, but I used all of that and transitioned here. And I think that's really helpful. So I didn't envision being in a role like this. You know, when you're in the TV world, in the media world, that's you feel like that's all you're ever going to do mm-hmm. because it's hard to really get past what you know and what's right in front of you. But then you kind of open yourself up to different things, and I've really enjoyed my time here. All right. So I I don't know why that in, in conversations we've had, usually during weather delays <laughs> at, at <laughs> football true. games. That's true. Uh, but I remember you saying you went to Northwestern. Is that correct? I went to Northwestern up in Chicago because I was born in Chicago. And uh, moved down here when I was eight years old. 
And my dad went to Northwestern as well. And I hadn't realized, I had just been following Northwestern forever because my dad went there. And I didn't realize they had such a great journalism program. So when I really got into this whole journalism thing in high school, I applied to my dad's alma mater and I got in. And then I got the job down here in Houston after a stop in Sherman, Texas, where I was there for about two and a half, three years covering high school sports, which is what I've always loved. And as you speak to me right now, you're wearing the maroon hoodie that could be for Cinco Ranch. It was Sherman Maroon. I've never seen them play. They are. They were Maroon. Yep. Yeah. Good job, Roger. (laughs) Nice job. Uh, They are part of one of the oldest rivalries in the state of Texas. Sherman Denison. That rivalry is always huge up there for the Battle of the Axe. There's very passionate fan bases up there. So it was it was fun covering high school sports there and then coming to Houston, which is obviously on a, on a grander scale. So you get to see two different variations of it. Yeah, so the detestable Denison Yellow Jackets, right? That's it, yes. I, 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 yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> they have a new stadium up there. I haven't been in Sherman in a long time, but they've built, uh, they've built up both of those programs a lot. Now they're, I think they jumped classification from when I was there too, but that rivalry is longstanding. All right. I'm sure you get a chance to meet a lot of athletes. Uh, Spencer Arigetti, Cinco Ranch grad. Have you had a chance to converse with him? I have not, actually. Not since he's been here. I haven't been, you know, because my job here doesn't allow me to go to the games as much. I will say, now that I'm not in the media world, my wife and I do have tickets to the Texans game. So I still go every Sunday, but now as a fan. So now we're like big time Texans fans. We're all in on it. I haven't talked to Spencer though, but I'm, I'm happy for him that we've seen his rise through the organization. By the way, something I should do, but I don't, I just spit out a name, but not everybody is a seam head and loves baseball. Spencer Arigetti, Astros pitcher, great part of the staff this year. And he went to Cinco Ranch. So that's why I brought his name up and we'll have one more quick visit. One, one other thing I want to ask Daniel Gotera. Glad you're with us on VipeFortBend.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi, my entire family's obsessed with all things Wicked, but my kids can't stop watching the trailer, and now they're having a Wicked-themed sleepover. Do you think our internet can handle all of the streaming and memeing going on? Well, we've engineered our Xfinity gateways to handle hundreds of devices at once, so they can all stay magically connected. Wow. Are you a wizard? I wish. No. Just someone that won't let a bad connection burst your internet bubble. Now through December 31st, get thrillifyingly fast Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for 12 months when you add Unlimited Mobile. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included at no extra cost. Or lock in your internet price for two years for just $5 more a month with a one-year contract. Early termination fee applies. Go to Xfinity.com to learn more and keep the magic going from your screen to the big screen. And see Wicked, only in theaters November 22nd. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan, auto pay bank account, equipment taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rate supply, actual speeds vary. All right, we're back with Daniel Gotera. The third quarter is going to be coming soon, but I wanted to ask him something about high school sports. I can tell that you you love your memories of going to high school venues. And I just wondered, do you sometimes, like like a coach, will watch a game, even if he's no longer coaching? And he'll kind of second guess and he'll see how things are done. Do you ever kind of watch the way they're presenting sports? Because it seems to me that the local stations sports segments are getting shorter and shorter i have an appetite for more and do you ever kind of look at them as an armchair quarterback yeah you know and that's it's really it's sad in a way because when you live in a city like houston when there's so much sports happening it's really it's really unfortunate that stations are only giving them about a minute minute and a half and that's oh that was always been a point of contention with the folks in the industry now that i'm not in it i can i can say that that that's something that we've always thought oh we should get some more time we're in the city of houston it's okay it's like dallas right we're a bigger city than dallas and they get a whole bunch of time and for their sports up there so but i think that's just the media landscape as a whole the local 
TV market is different, and it's it's not an easy time to be in the local TV market, but it's always changing. So that's why you have to come up with different programs, right? But yes, as an armchair quarterback, I, I do kind of sit and wish these guys had a little bit more time and can really expand their repertoire because we have some really talented people still. I know there's been some change over here recently. I know Matt Musil left right after me. Mark Berman left from Fox. So there has been some changeover for people that have been here for a long time, but we still have some good folks that need their time. And by the way, I am continuing to pursue getting an interview with Matt Musil and one with Mark Berman because, oh, the stories they could tell. Oh, absolutely. Those guys have been around for so long and, you know, worked with Matt for, what, 15 years over there at Channel 11. He told me a bunch of good stuff. Maybe some of them that he can't share, but some that he could share. Mark as well. I mean, those guys are just an encyclopedia of Houston sports knowledge. I think about Matt when it was the Love You Blue Oilers era when – you didn't have to hang back and only go into the terminal area of an airport oh, yeah. if uh, you didn't have a ticket. And in those days, teams actually traveled on a regular plane with seats next to civilians and stuff like that. And when the Oilers would come back from some of those playoff victories, it was insane. It was absolutely a fire marshal's nightmare, but so much enjoyment for those who got to see him come off the plane yeah absolutely I j it just felt like you know fans just felt a connection to these guys a little bit more so than they do now but again that goes back to the changing social media landscape and how players have their own voices and you know media is cut off a little bit more some of these professional teams but it's the sign of the times it's 2024 so things change but yeah those oilers they they have documentaries made about them that was i wish i had covered that team because they seem to be a lot of fun all right so um I had a friend share an article with me that kind of uh, told the story about how the local sports anchor used to be such a big star. I mean, he would, when, when he would walk onto the sidelines to cover a game, there would be people yelling out his name, you know, whether it was uh, Gifford Nielsen or whomever, Bob, Bob Allen, Allen, that kind of thing. Yep, yep. So um, I will share that with you if I can dig up that article. But now, and I'm not picking on Greg Bailey, he seems to have the shortest segment and, and he'll talk for about 40 seconds, seconds and say, we'll be right back, you know, and yeah. that's, that's the end of it. And that, that, that's really what it's become. I mean, there's so many things that news stations are trying to pack in. They're trying to appeal to social media a little bit more. They're trying to, they're trying to do different things. And I've always, my, my big commentary on local news has always been stations have to define what success looks like for them. And sometimes, unfortunately, it doesn't include sports. And which stinks because Houston is a really passionate sports town still. And they love their sports, especially the Texans and the, and the Rockets and the Astros, more so the Astros and the Texans. Those are really the ones driving this train. So, but yeah, my heart goes out to those guys sometimes because I love all those guys and, and I developed some good relationships with them. So it is weird not being in that vibe, but the fact that I'm still here at the sports authority, getting to work with them and being around them is great. All right, Daniel Gotera, fantastic work here at the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. Thanks for spending so much time with us. I hope I didn't empty my briefcase too much because sometime next year, I think I want to talk to you again, see what's going on over here. Absolutely. And hey, I'm, well, I'm happy to come on anytime to talk with you and anything that you guys need. You guys do awesome work. I really appreciate all the stuff you do for Houston. And we can be friends unless Cinco Ranch is playing one of our Fort Bend County teams like Fulcher or Ridgepoint in a playoff situation. I'm sorry. Uh, we can't talk to each other at that time. And uh, oh, one other thing. Zane Smith is this amazing running back for Fulcher. He hasn't cut his hair since the second grade. It's hanging out the back of his helmet, and he has a brother who plays for Houston's rugby team who is the youngest, I believe, professional rugby player in the history of the world. Really? Yes, last wow. name Smith, but no relation to me. Wow, that's fantastic. No, I, that full share program has really gotten strong over the last couple of years. Coach Caduti? Yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy out there. I've, I've done a couple of things with him. In fact, I live out there in Katy near near Fulcher, so the high school is about 15 minutes away from me. So, yeah, that's that's a great that's a great angle. That's a great story to do. I hope he doesn't get pulled down by his hair too much. He though. did in I'm the sure most recent Fulcher game that we broadcasted. He get, did get yanked down, and I was so proud of myself. I said, "That's not a penalty. It's okay to do that. Horse collar is a penalty, but yanking the hair is okay." Oh man, that should be a penalty though. Man, that could be really bad. No, hopefully they do well. Hopefully they do well. All right. 
Daniel Golterra, thanks, thanks again. And uh, we'll be back with the third quarter, either in a minute from now or just a few minutes from now on VipeFortBend.com. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Back at Trailer Stadium, about three minutes before we resume the game between Randall and Belton. It's 56 to 7. The Randall Lions on top. Okay, so let's give give you some scores. First of all, let's let's think about the Marshall Buffs, who played in the same district as Randall and lost only two games this year. One of them was to the Randall Lions, but uh, the Buffs have gone on the road to Waco University, and they're looking really good at halftime. 35 to 7. Marshall over Waco University but there are no other games that are in the mix of class 5A's district that includes Marshall and Randall it's just this game that we're broadcasting and Marshall's game at Waco University but the Buffs look like they're on the way to a win all right so now let's talk about the teams out of Fort Bend ISD let's start with the Elkins Knights in class 6A division 2 at halftime, they lead favored Shadow Creek 23-21. to 21. That's Elkins 23 and Shadow Creek 21. And that game has gone to halftime. So, let's see. Also in Class 6A Division 2, Manville is leading Hightower 16-7 to 7 at the half. That would definitely be an upset if the Manville Mavericks knocked Hightower out of that game. And the winner of that one is likely to play Summer Creek next week, which is just absolutely brutal to have to play Summer Creek in the second round. Uh, Hightower lost to Summer Creek in the Region 3 final. You could also call it the state quarterfinals last year. All right, so let's move up to Class 6A Division 1. Ridge Point leading Pasadena Doby 28-10 at the half. If Ridge Point wins, they will likely play North Shore next week. However... North Shore is not exactly running away with it. Deer Park is trailing 28 to 13 at the half. So North Shore, probably they'll pull away in the second half like they always do and win that one, but it's a little bit closer than I would have thought it would be after two quarters. North Shore 28, Deer Park 13. All right, and then uh, let's go back down to Class 5A, Class 5A, Division One, and the Foster Falcons are. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm see. I'm so stuck in the old ways. Foster is a 6A team, just like Fulcher is. I knew that, but I did just. Uh, it flew out of my head for a moment. Okay, so we're talking 6A Division Two, and Katie Jordan, a very strong team this year, second in the district behind the Katie Tigers, and Jordan is leading Foster, but Foster putting up a good fight. It is 20 to seven. And that game has gone to the fourth quarter. Katie Jordan 20, Foster 7 in the fourth quarter. And the only other game that I think you might be interested in that I have not shared is Klein Collins, which is a Class 6A Division I team in uh, Region 2. They don't really play teams in Fort Bend County. Collins leads Cy Woods 23-7 to in the third quarter. Cy Woods was having a great year, but they got spanked last week by Bridgeland. Didn't get the district title, and they may have a hangover right now as Collins is leading Cy Woods 23-7. Okay, here we go. Christian Mungia kicking off to start the third quarter, and the ball comes down inside the five, and it's going to be a return by Belton, and they don't get to the 20. Nice tackle on special teams. It was Ashton Johnson 
who brought down the return man, Damian Tiumalu. Tiumalu, sorry about that. Damian Tiumalu, who's listed as a defensive lineman, but they've been using him as a running back and just then as a kick returner. So Belton, they they realize, you know, it's no longer an issue as to whether they're going to win this game or not. They just want to do some good things. All right, so on the first play of this third quarter, it's a pass completion. The quarterback, Will Shepard, faking the handoff and, and just quickly getting the ball out of his hand over to the right side. Gavin Ross made a catch, and he gained about three yards, and getting up and showing sportsmanship, Jaquin Parker, who tackled him, kind of taps him on the side of the helmet. Good job, young man. It is 56-7, Randall over Belton. And the Tigers have, you know, for being outmanned, they're actually executing pretty well. It is just tough for them to get away from this fast-moving Randall defense and another swing pass this time to the near side of the field and they deliver it to Colin Taylor he makes a catch that gains uh, gains one yard so it's going to be third down no I gained two okay they move the stick a little bit so it's third down and five for Belton first possession of this third quarter by the way I'm going to Keep my app open, and I will have updates on all of those scores that I gave you because none of them were final. On third down and five, Shepard hit from the blind side, and down he goes. Sacked at the 14. That's a loss of nine. Coming off the edge, completely unblocked, was Jalen Burton. And if Jalen Burton likes to block punts and hit people, who are carrying the football. He is having the night of his life, and he's out there celebrating with his teammates. You know, that uh, it feels pretty good when you come around the uh, end, the blind side unblocked. Wow. You get to light someone up. All right, here is the punt coming from Graham Chambly. And there's a Belton player arriving very late, lines up and on 4th and twelve. They've had trouble with punts, but this one is a beauty. High and taken at the 43-yard line and a nice move after making the catch. Sean Smith heads over to the sideline and gets out of bounds near the 30-yard line. So already leading 56-7. Randall is going to have a very short field to work with. They'll be at the 31. Okay, uh, you heard Ronnie Morgan, our referee, and we haven't had to hear him very often. This has been a somewhat penalty-free game. I'm, I'm sure that we've had fewer than five total. It's been a very cleanly played game to this point. So the holding penalty is a spot foul, and it'll move the ball back right at the 50-yard line, and that's where the Randall Lions will start this possession. Tyler Skrbonik still in there at quarterback, and I think Sincere Timpson is his running back to his right. Mixon moves over to the left side of the formation. Fake to Timpson. Skrbonik throws near side. He's got Mixon, 40, 35, 30, near sideline, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Mason Mixon! It's a one-play, 50-yard touchdown drive. And they're starting to let the clock bleed a little bit more after these plays because of the one-sided nature of this game. It is 62-7 with the extra point to come. Mason Mixon, one of many talented, you know, guys who can carry the football or catch the football and run with it. And he really turned on the Jets down the sideline and ran away from the Belton defenders. Jackson Montelongo still holding for Christian Munguia, the kicker. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 63-7, to and uh, Jackson Montelongo is holding for place kicks for Randall because the normal holder, which is Keelan Sweeney, was hurt near the end of the second quarter, and... Uh, 
No report on him, but I'll tell you what, during commercial breaks, I'm going to check out the sideline and see if he appears. Hopefully he is uh, maybe just kind of, he's taking his pads off. They need Keelan Sweeney going forward. We'll be right back. Leanetti Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Leonetti Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Leonetti Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. We appreciate Leonetti Graphics, and um, if you're in any venue where we're broadcasting, we always put up those banners. We're very proud of them. And Mungia bangs the kickoff into the end zone, and Belton doesn't want to return it. So we're at 7 minutes, 31 seconds to go in the third quarter, and this game is really out of hand, 63-7. to 7. So I think we're going to see a running clock at times. Belton's got a long trip back. And Randall has shown these Tigers just how good they are. All right, Shepard fakes another handoff, swings one over to the sideline. And it's a decent game, maybe five, six, seven yards, but I believe a flag has come in. That completed to Gavin Ross. Gavin Ross is tough. They have blasted him many a time after making those catches on the short passes. Belton just does not have Shepard developed yet as a quarterback to really throw the ball down the field. When they have tried to throw the ball down the field, they've been intercepted three times. So that's just playing against Randall. All right, second down and three. The seven-yard gain counted, and another catch. It is Gavin Ross, and it's a first down at the 44. He picks up 12 yards on that one. Shadowing him and making the tackle, but unable to prevent the completion, Jaquin Parker of Randall. And the clock is really moving fast now. 6.24 6.24 to go and still ticking down. By the way, uh, we really appreciate everything that the UIL does. And, you know, athletics is not even 50%, not even close to 50% of what the UIL does. Dropping back, Shepard throws a little down and out. It's another completion. Nice catch by Brandon Marcano, his first catch. But he is absolutely blown up after that catch. Let's see who the would-be assassin was. Well, he's patting himself on top of the head. So uh, I believe that's Blake Thompson. Might be Sherrod Rivas. Could be a three. Could be an eight. But it is a three-yard pickup after the catch by Marcano. Again, it's his first. And Shepard fumbles the snap and just has to save the possession. He ends up falling down four yards behind the line of scrimmage as the the rush was about to rain down on him, namely Cameron Hippolyte. So that gives up the three yards that they gained on the previous play, and it's third down and ten from the 43 for Belton. Shepard in the gun, low snap, takes the uh, Fakes the handoff, swings it over here to the near side, and it's a short gain. They got about four, but it's going to be short of the first down as they deliver one to Kai Griffin. Where's number 23, and Belton's going to punt it away. And like I said, the clock is uh, ticking down quickly. We're at 440 to go as they run the clock in our one-sided game, 63-7. to Okay, they have a different punter this time. Belton uh, is using Sebastian Magana 
and he punts it out of bounds on the far sideline. Not too much distance on that one. So Randall, let's see. Randall, well, where are they going to spot the football? They're going to have it at the 20-yard line. Okay. Attention football fanatics, don't miss out on the opportunity to be a part of Texas football history where dreams are realized, legends are born, and where unforgettable moments unfold before your very eyes. Mark your calendars for the UIL State Football Championships December 18th through 21st at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington, where the best teams from 6-man to 6A leave it all on the field. And as I tell you about that, it's a big gain for Randall. Sincere Timpson taking it almost all the way to midfield. In fact, he did reach midfield, so it's a 30-yard pickup. Anyway, uh, you want to go to Arlington and be the champion. For the latest updates and ticket information, head over to UILTexas.org slash football. Again, that's UILTexas.org slash football. All right, they're going to run to the left, the Randall Lions are. And they're no longer depending on Sincere Timpson or... Landon Williams Callis, they go with Deshaun Burton. And he takes it over to the left side for a two yard pickup. And let's see. They have in a new quarterback as well. Tyler Scrabonic might be done for the evening. Beatty Bratcher has come in. And we're still wondering about Keelan Sweeney, the receiver who was injured near the end of the second quarter. Hope he can be back for Randall's next playoff. And then they they run to the near side, the same play using Deshaun Burton, but this time Belton is just all over it. They blow it up for a loss of three yards. Gavin Warren on the tackle for the Belton Tigers. Ball at the 43-yard line, two and a half minutes to go. In fact, less than that in the third quarter. Bratcher in the spread formation, calling for the snap, drops back, throws, and it floats a little bit, and it sails, and it's incomplete. It goes off the hands of good luck, I can load so to Jimmy. Let me say it again. Good luck, I can load so to Jimmy. That's right. That's the young man's name. I'm going to count the syllables. Good luck, I can load so to Jimmy. Okay, that's nine syllables. That is a mouthful. Well, that incomplete pass leads to a fourth down. The clock keeps running because of the, well, it's basically mercy. And Perry Kindred punts it for uh, Randall. And a fall catch, a fair catch near the 30-yard line for Gavin Ross of Belton. And here we go with another Belton Tigers possession, 151 to go in the third. It is 63 to 7 Randall Lions. Gavin Ross and Josiah Martinez, receivers to the near side for Belton. They break the huddle, Shepard the quarterback. Fakes a handoff, wants to pass, throws a little tunnel screen. Gavin Ross makes another catch and another first down gain. I'll tell you what, you got to like the way these Belts and Tigers just keep on playing. So that takes them from the 32 to the 50, an 18-yard pickup for Gavin Ross. Now, granted, a whole lot of players on defense right now for Randall are not their first teamers, but nevertheless... I like the way Belton is has signed up for 48. You know what I mean? Shepard gets it out of his hand quickly. Near side, and it's going to be a throwback from Martinez back to their quarterback. And it is Shepard going down the far sideline inside the 20. Oh, what a beautiful play by Belton. But you know what? I look across to the other side. That was a fantastic play. And their their fans shell-shocked from being down 63-7. to They hardly react. 
Wow, it's like like nothing happened. Wow. Wow, that was terrific. Beautiful throw over to the near side. Josiah Martinez flung it back to the other side to Shepard, and Shepard had speed when he got out in the open, 15-yard line. And a whistle. I think we got a timeout, Randall. Yep, we do. We'll be right back after this from the University Interscholastic League on VibeFortBend.com. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. At the first opportune time, I'm going to share with you the latest scores from games that are being played on Thursday night in the first round of the playoffs. But first, attention football fanatics, don't miss out on the opportunity to be a part of Texas football history where dreams are realized, legends are born, and unforgettable moments unfold before your very eyes. Mark your calendars for the UIL State Football Championships December 18th through 21st at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington. More in a moment on that. First and 10 for Belton from the 15-yard line. Shepard hands it off. No, he keeps it. He runs up the middle, gets to about the 11 where he is stoned. Nice hit from Randall's Justin Black to limit him to a four-yard gain. So anyway, you know, December 18th through 21st at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington, the best best teams from 6-man to 6-A will leave it all on the field in the hopes of being a champion. For the latest updates and ticket information, head over to UILTexas.org slash football. That's, again, that's UILTexas.org slash football by the way we have come to the end of the third quarter it is 63 to 7 randall over belton and we'll be back and give you some scores from everything else that's going on on thursday night that you might be interested in especially in the houston area we shall return on vipefortben.com Mark your calendars. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball, get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Oh, yeah, can't wait for Fulcher to hopefully win their volleyball match tomorrow night, the region final against Cinco Ranch over at the Merrill Center in Katy. So if they can do that, then they'll play again probably on Tuesday in a state semifinal. And wherever that is, we going. That's right. VibeFortMen.com loves Fulcher volleyball. Okay, let's see. Uh, I was going to. Round up those scores for you. Just a quick refresh. All right, so here we go with a pass into the corner of the end zone, and it's broken up. Gavin Ross, the intended receiver. All right, so Fort Bend Elkins, the Knights hanging on. 23-21, to 21, they lead Shadow Creek in the third quarter of their game that I believe is being played at Freedom Field. Klein Collins has... Maintain that lead, 29-22. They're leading Cy Woods, and that game is a Division II game. I'm sorry, it's a Region II game in Class 6A, so it doesn't really affect Fort Bend County and Katy and Pearland and people like that. All right, third down and seven for Belton. And it's a draw play. Up the middle they go. And they don't get the first down yardage as they give it off to number 35. And I don't have a number 35 on my roster. I would be, I'd love to tell you who number 35 is, but none on the roster. By the way, North Shore is has expanded its lead over Deer Park. It is 35 to 13 in the third quarter. Mustangs ranked number two in just about any poll you would look at in Class 6A. 
Manville still leading Hightower at 16 to 7 in the third. Ridge Point has opened up their lead over Pasadena Doby. It's 41 to 10 in the third. Okay, fourth and two, and Belton's going to go for it. But first, they call a timeout, which gives me time to give you one or two more scores. All right, so Katie Jordan, hey, uh, Richmond Foster. They're in the class 6A Division II playoffs, and they're playing Katie Jordan. It's in the fourth quarter, but it's a one-score game. Jordan only up 22-14 to 14 on Foster. So I hope Shane Hanks and his guys can pull that one out. That would be a, a huge victory for Fort Bend County, an upset for sure. Okay, now I need to keep going because i got to find that that game between Marshall and Waco University. The Buffs were up 35-7 at the half, and they've expanded that lead. It is 42-7, Marshall over Waco U. So, uh, you know, the district that includes Randall and Marshall is looking pretty good right now. Okay, so I'll refresh that one more time. And uh, bring it to you before we end this game. 10.53 to go in the fourth quarter. All right, on fourth and two. It is a touchdown over the right side for the Belton Tigers. I like the way they have persevered and taken it into the end zone is Damian Tiumalu. So the Tigers have picked up an offensive touchdown that makes it 63 to 13, and we'll see if they are going to go for two or will they kick it. By the way, Ronnie Morgan, our ref, says holding. Oh, my goodness. It's holding against Belton. That nullifies the touchdown. So it'll be repeat fourth down, and it'll come from the 15-yard line. So now rather than try to score from the 15, they, you know, actually, it, it would be, uh, they would be trying to make a first down at the five. I think, uh, well, they're going to they're gonna go for it. I thought for a moment they might bring out their kicker, but no. They're going to go for it on fourth and ten. Dropping back. And over the middle, too high for the intended receiver. That's a shame. Will Shepard's pass was too tall for his receiver, who was actually well covered. And that was Josiah Martinez on the crossing route, and Randall had it covered. So the clock will continue ticking down, basically having mercy. It's a 63-7 to game. And by the way, uh, if you folks at Belton were still listening um, and you heard me say touchdown, I'm so sorry that I didn't see that flag. I didn't mean to get you unnecessarily excited. All right, Bratcher still out at quarterback for Randall. Okay, so there was a penalty against Randall, and uh, I like hearing the Randall band. I just, it's no big deal, uh, but we didn't hear what the penalty was for. Probably a false start. Okay, first down and 15. Bratcher hands it off in a running play to the near side. It's Deshaun Burton. And he gets back, uh, gets three of the five yards back, so it's second down and 12 coming up. All right, Bratcher. In the spread, hands it off, running right, and there goes Deshaun Burton. He's in the open, 30. He's at the 40, 45, 50. Two men to beat, cuts back toward the middle, and down at about the 32. And good on those Belton defensive backs. You know, they they got to be frustrated. They didn't give up. They went after it, and number 31 makes the tackle. I like to tell you who he is, but there's no 31 on the roster. And there is a flag, and it looks like it's going to be against Randall, and that'll bring this back anyway. We have 8.47 to go. It is 63-7. Randall over Belton. Randall every bit as good as advertised. 
By the way, anytime you're on VibeFortMen.com, if you are listening live, that's fantastic. If you want to listen later, if there's a great victory you want to relive, you want to hear the highlights, we will bring it to you on our podcast about 30 minutes usually after one of our live broadcasts ends. We'll bring it back to you. So that big gain, yeah, it's a holding penalty. So Deshaun Burton with that long run, it gets wiped out. And now it is second down and 13 for the Randall Lions. And Bratcher hands it off again over the right side. Another big gain. Deshaun Burton carries for a first down across the 30 to the 32. He picked up 19, and that moves the six. It's a first down. Think of First Hiron Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsthironauto.com. Under eight and a half minutes to go. Bratcher in the shotgun with a running back to either side of him. And he hands it off and running left again. It is Deshaun Burton. Different back. Sorry about that. Jace Norman. That's his first carry. Five-yard pickup, second down and five, and Randall just trying to finish off this game. A rousing playoff win. And running to the right, Deshaun Burton fighting for the first down. He's got it at the 42. So Randall looking like they have a special team, and they look pretty good in that Region 3 bracket of Class 5A Division 2. Here's a handoff, and I think uh, Bratcher and his running back to Sean Burton got their, their feet tangled up a bit, so that's a no-gainer. We're under seven and a half minutes to go. I think I better uh, go ahead and refresh those scores for you again. So we can give you the very latest. Here goes Burton with a little stutter step move in the interior line and he finds some daylight. He picks up seven more to the 50. Second down and three coming up. All right, so here is the very latest. Stand by, I'm watching the thing, you know, circle and stuff like it was. Still third quarter, still Fort Bend Elkins leading Alvin Shadow Creek, 23 to 21. Third down and three. Bratcher drops back, throws over the middle. Got a catch for a first down at the 41. Eight-yard pickup as he delivered it on the crossing route to Ashton Johnson. All right, so what a game between Klein Collins and Cy Woods. Collins leads 32-22 that game in the fourth quarter. Straight ahead run, not much there. Different running back for Randall. Jeffrey Thomas. Thank you, Justin. Wonderful service here. Second down and 10. No gain on that last run for Thomas. Slanting over the left side to Sean Burton. Picks up three and a half. Lyric McGinnis on the tackle for Belton with five and a half minutes to go. So North Shore pulling away from Deer Park. That's kind of predictable, 42 to 13, but the Deer hung in there for a long time. Got to be pleased with that. All right, third quarter still Manville and Hightower in a 16 to seven game. Manville on top. Running to the left is Randall grinding it out. They're gonna be under five minutes before they run the next play. Who carried that one? It was Deshaun Burton again. Third quarter, Ridge Point leads Pasadena Adobe 41 to 10. That's the same as the last time we updated that one for you. And Katie Jordan still just eight points ahead of Foster. It's 22 to 14. That game is in the fourth. I don't know if it's at Rhodes or Legacy. Fourth down and four, and Bratcher is going to throw for it. But Belton is there to stop it. A little swing pass over to the far side is not going to get the job done. Belton comes up with a great offense, uh, defensive play. Jacob Lewis finishing off the tackle, and the ball goes over. And we've got 4.39 to go in this one-sided game, 63-7 Randall over Elkins.
Marshall still leading Waco U, 42-7. And I think that's all you need to know. By the way, 6.45 p.m. tomorrow, countdown to kickoff show, Fulcher and Katie Pato from right here at Trailer Stadium. Shepard still in there at quarterback, hands it off straight ahead. It's just a one-yard gain. And it's the hard-working running back, Gino Zecca. Well, I know there will be brighter days ahead for Belton. They just were bit hard by the injury bug, so they came into this game with a record of 2-8. And And it's the good, good type of game for Randall to have because the playoff road is long and difficult. And practices, frankly... Leading up to this game, way more difficult than the game itself. Second down and nine. Shepard wants to pass. Stand strong. Now he's flush. Look out. He's in trouble. Goes far sideline. Gets rid of it and throws it away. Good job by Shepard to avoid a big loss of yardage. Don't be alarmed by the sound you're about to hear. I should have taken my recording device out of the side of the laptop a long time ago. But at least it is... uh, all charged up so we're gonna get out of here by about 9 15 you know as far as the end of the game not too many high school football games are over in two hours and 15 minutes all right dropping back Shepard after the play fake near sideline he's got a completion and a big gain to the 50 12 yard pickup Nice comeback route, Colin Sally, and that moves the sticks. It's a first down. Think of First Tyron Automotive. For all your car care needs, check them out at firsttyronauto.com. So what we hope happens tomorrow, that Fulcher gets a win over Katie Pato, and that meanwhile back on, you know, back in Katie at the Merrill Center, if the Fulcher girls can defeat Cinco Ranch in their regional volleyball final, then uh, if the girls can get over here for an in-game interview and talk about their win, that would be great. Down and out pass far sideline. Belton gets a completion. Shepard under pressure but throwing with authority. Uh, I'm looking way over there. Okay, now I know who did it. Kai Griffin. I believe that's his second catch of the night. 42-yard line. Clock getting down to and right at two and a half minutes right this second second down and two after that eight yard gain low snap Shepard picks it up gets rid of it and the pass is caught oh my goodness it's a short gain but it's everything they needed for the first down Josiah Martinez he is playing his butt off and so too are a lot of his teammates in fact they give him forward progress to the Randall 39 and that is yet another first down They got a touchdown that was nullified by penalty earlier in this quarter, and I know they want one, but they may run out of time. We're under two minutes to go. Shepard in the gun. Fakes the handoff, drops the ball, has to fall on it. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be a three-yard loss, second down and 13. And the clock is down at a minute and a half, and Belton's still out there running plays, but they're not exactly running the hurry-up offense. Kind of a muddle huddle. Here we go. Make it second down and 14, not 13, and Shepard drops back, stands strong. Here comes the rush. Steps up, and he fires it deep over the middle. It is inside the five and broken up. Randall playing hard, too. They're not just kind of giving, giving up yardage and plays. That's not what they're about. Uh, Let me give credit for the DB. Uh, I can tell you he's wearing lime sherbet wearing, uh, I'm sorry, lime sherbet colored gloves. The clock continues to run after that uh, incomplete pass. And by the way, the guy who made the play, Jaden Williams. Okay, and now a sack. And that may be the end of this evening of futility for the Belton Tigers crashing in and sacking Shepard was Ryan Mallory and there's less than a minute to go we may have one more play and that should be it 
Randall fans starting to make their way toward the exits. Their work is done. And you got to be excited about what Randall can do in the Region 3 of Class 5A D2. Shepard throws it in the middle of a little screen. And down to the 36-yard line, they get it in the hands of Evan Echipare. And that may be the final play. Six seconds on the clock. Clock's going to run out. That'll do it. So the Randall Lions are victorious in their playoff opener in 2024. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this on VibeFortMen.com. Xfinity here. How can we help? Hi. My entire family's obsessed with all things Wicked, but my kids can't stop watching the trailer, and now they're having a Wicked-themed sleepover. Do you think our internet can handle all of the streaming and memeing going on? Well, we've engineered our Xfinity gateways to handle hundreds of devices at once, so they can all stay magically connected. Wow. Are you a wizard? I wish. No. Just someone that won't let a bad connection burst your internet bubble. Now through December 31st, get thrillifyingly fast Xfinity Gig Internet for $25 a month for 12 months when you add unlimited mobile. And get Peacock Premium, a $7.99 a month value included at no extra cost. Or lock in your internet price for two years for just $5 more a month with a one-year contract. Early termination fee applies. Go to Xfinity.com to learn more and keep the magic going from your screen to the big screen. And see Wicked, only in theaters November 22nd. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay for bank account. Equipment taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rate supply. Actual speeds vary. Okay, the players still shaking hands here at Trailer Stadium, and Randall gets the easy win, 63-7 to over Belton. Okay, so the way this game went, early on it was a 69-yard touchdown run by Landon williams Callis that happened in the first half minute of the game. And then the next possession for the Randall Lions resulted in a 66-yard run for a touchdown by Landon williams Callis, And there were so many touchdowns after that. You had Tyler Skrabonik with a keeper for a touchdown. Jackson Montelongo with a catch for a touchdown. Oh, it was just just an onslaught, and there were lots of interceptions. Three picks in the first half by the Randall defense. Sacks on Shepard, who held up very well under all the pressure that he was facing, but uh, Randall was just too tough. 63-7, they win it. And so let's see what else is going on. Anything that we can tell you? that would be of interest okay well uh it's not over it's in the fourth quarter at freedom field in alvin but the elkins knights have lost the lead shadow creek now on top 28 to 23 and it's gotten a lot closer in that game between klein collins and Cy woods a very important playoff opener in division i keep saying division two i mean region two Klein Collins is still up on Cy Woods, but it's 32 to 29. North Shore is going to hang on and beat Deer Park 42 to 13. So it'll be North Shore against Ridge Point next week. No question about it. That'll be the matchup because Ridge Point is is winning in their game also. But with the new UIL realignment, it is absolutely brutal. If Hightower can win its first game, they got to play Summer Creek the next week more than likely. And Ridge Point wins its first game, which it looks like they're going to do over Pasadena Doby. And they'll have to play North Shore next week. So Hightower is in trouble, deep trouble. They're down 23 to seven in the fourth. Manville 23, Hightower seven. And the hurricane season is on the brink in uh, class 6A division two. Ridge Point easily gonna defeat Doby 42 to 16 in the fourth is the score of that game. Katie Jordan beat Richmond Foster. The Foster Falcons, though, played a fantastic game. I'm proud of Coach Hanks and his group. They made it close. Uh, Nobody would have thought that they would come within eight points of Jordan, but they did it. Uh, Great effort, and Coach uh, Hanks and Foster, I think it's going to be a really good third year for him with uh, being the head coach of the Foster Falcons program. And let's see, the only other one I can think of that you really need to know about is Marshall and Waco U. And the Marshall Buffs are stampeding 49-7 to in the fourth quarter over Waco University. All right, thanks for being with us for this lopsided win. But Randall 
looking impressive for a reason. They got a good football team. 63-7, to they defeat Belton. And safe journey to everybody at Belton who has to make that trip back. And uh, good luck next year. I'm sure that uh, there's a good chance we'll see you in the coming seasons as long as the UIL realigns it in such a way that teams in Randall's district are playing teams from the one that includes Waco University and Belton and, uh, let's see, Colleen Ellison and also uh, Brenham. All right. So good night, everybody, from Trailer Stadium, and we will talk to you at 645 tomorrow. Full shirt taking on Katie Pato. For Rosie Vega, the silent partner inside the mothership at Vibe World Headquarters, I'm Roger Smith saying goodbye and God bless from Trailer, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Ain't high school football great?